Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. I say that particularly if this just happens to be your very first time to tune in to the broadcast. If you can, right now, reach over, get your Bible, and join me as my Bible sits open to the book of Titus in chapter 3. Uh, one of the key things we do here on the broadcast is we teach through books of the Bible, and we are in the throes of studying the book of Titus. We are right smack dab in the middle of some of the most precious verses that there are in Scripture for you and I to use to share the gospel with others. Titus chapter 3 verse 7 will be our focus. Along with your Bible, get something on which to jot some notes. I've got three words beginning with the letter R for you. I've also got some gospel tracts to try to urge you to get from us. A lot of things going on, but get your Bible and let me lead into the Bible study time this way. Years ago, in the daily devotional called My Daily Bread, I read this story. Isidore Zimmerman had served 25 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. But because of false testimony at his trial, he was convicted of killing a New York City policeman. In time, however, his innocence was proven, and in 1962, he was released. But he did live on, but not happily ever after. Even though he had been innocent all along, Zimmerman couldn't escape the stigma of being an ex-convict. What few jobs he could find soon ended when his employers learned that he had been in prison. His record was cleared, but his society, the people around him, did not fully accept him. What a striking contrast, the journal here, the devotional goes on to say, what a striking contrast to our standing with God when we trust Jesus as our Savior. This is the truth that's before us today in Titus 3, 7. Get your Bible. If this is your first time to be part of the broadcast, you have joined us on a great, great day. I mentioned a moment ago some gospel tracts. I've got one in my hand. Now, friend, a gospel tract, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of saving sinners from their sin, giving them eternal life and giving them the hope of heaven. By the word hope, I don't mean the hope so, but the assurance of heaven. The tract in my hand right now was entitled, What God Wants Everyone to Know. What God Wants Everyone to Know. Many churches use this tract, by the way, in their visitor packet at their church because it's beautifully done and so very clear. Here are some things God wants everyone to know. The first question is, who is God? It's answered here. Where did we come from? Where did Adam and Eve live? Who is the devil? What is sin? Why do people die? It's going to get to this question, who is Jesus and how can you go to heaven? All that is answered in a relatively short period of time in this beautifully done gospel tract. I want to put this track in your hand. And as a matter of fact, I want to put an entire sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks into your hand. Our motto for our ministry is this, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. We produce gospel tracks in different languages, give them out all over the world. We do it for free because we want people to get the gospel and we do not want gospel workers to ever be in need of tools to help extend their gospel efforts. This is a great track, what God wants everyone to know, but it's just one of about 41 tracks 
in that sample packet. Would you be ready with that pen and paper at the end of the broadcast when my announcer gives our contact number? Would you jot one of the methods down there? Would you give us your name and your mailing address? Do it today, would you? Do it today. Ask for the sample packet. It's free. Did I mention it's free? I want to put these tracks in your hand to help you extend the gospel. You're going to find some great gospel tools there. This one, what God wants everyone to know, is just one of them. Do that today. Well, if your Bible is open to the book of Titus, chapter 3, I begin reading at verse 5. It says this, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his, God's mercy, he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That, here's our key verse for today, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs together to the hope of eternal life. Stop right there. Now, verse 7, as I said, is my focus today. And the obvious key word in verse 7 has to be the word justified, justified. In recent weeks, we uh, celebrated the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and one of the great battle cries of the Protestant Reformation was that sinners are justified by God through faith in Christ alone, and the emphasis is on that word alone. It's critical. Sinners are declared to be the enemies of God and declared to be the outcasts away from God, but sinners can be made a friend friend of God and part of his family. How this happens is that a sinner by faith receives Jesus Christ as their savior. In so doing, the sinner totally abandons all, and I mean all, hope and trust in his or her personal good works and morality. That's part of what verse 5 here talks about, not by works of righteousness. Our verse 7 tells us about just one of the things that happens to any person at the very moment they receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Verse 7 says they are justified, and friend, that's a legal term. It's a courtroom term. In my lead-in story, Mr. Zimmerman never did the crime that sent him to prison. His innocence had, though, to be discovered, but he was truly innocent. Releasing him from prison was the righteous thing for the government to do. Sinners, though, are just the opposite of all this. We are guilty of mountains load of sin. We deserve to be punished. We have earned hell's flames. But verse 7 says, God, by his grace, justifies us. God declares us innocent. That's what the word justified means. God does this not because we actually are us innocent, but because Jesus paid our sin debt. The American legal system never, ever, ever would allow this to happen. A person who is innocent would not be allowed to go to prison for a person who is guilty. God, though, provided his means of making sinners free from guilt because God knew we were totally unable. We never would be saved by whatever efforts or deeds we could possibly do, not just in our lifetime, but throughout eternity. Now, I mentioned I had three words beginning with the letter R. Here they are. I'm going to, these are all based up and coming out of verse seven. Are you ready? Word number one is this, reason, reason. What reason did God find to declare us justified, to declare us innocent of our sin crimes, to wipe out our sin record? The answer, just one, his grace. It was his own act out of his own character that moved him to give us whatever we did not deserve. God says you are innocent, not because you've done something, just because God says, I choose to declare you innocent because you used my method. You placed your faith in my son, Jesus Christ, in his blood death at Calvary, his resurrection from the tomb, you ask Christ to be your savior. That's the reason we can be declared innocent or justified. Word number one is the word reason. Word number two is the word record. Our sin record is totally 
made clean. That's really what's behind the word justified. There's a lot of pictures in the Bible that describe all this. One is that God buries all of our sins in the depths of the sea. Another Bible picture of what God does with our sin record when we receive Christ as Savior is that God removes our sin, our sin guiltiness, as far away from us as the East is from the West. That's why, as a youngster, I grew up in Sunday school and church singing this little chorus, gone, 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 yes, my sins are gone. My friend, have you received Christ? Is your sin record been expunged? Is your, are the sin record gone because of the blood of Christ has declared you to be free from it? Now, friend, if you will receive Christ as Savior, God will erase your sin record too. But the method of having the sin record erased is not your goodness, your righteous works. It's the grace of God shown by sending his son to die in our place. We've had three words. We have three words here. One, reason. Why? God's grace. Number two, record. God declares and cleans our sin record. My word number three is the word relationship relationship. Again, I'm going to read the last half of verse 7. It says, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, because our sin record is gone and we are sinless through Jesus's work. Now, friend, I received Christ as a seven-year-old boy. My sin record is gone. God sees me as sinless because my sin debt is gone. There is no sin debt anymore. There is no record on my sin record. It's gone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. But now because our sin record is gone and we are sinless through Jesus's work, now that we stand redeemed through the blood of Jesus, we are heirs of eternal life. We now have a share in this life of God, which we receive again as a gift of God's grace. Back in Titus chapter 1, the verse 2, the, the second verse of the book, it, we read these words, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. God's plan to declare sinners sinless and justified has been an eternal plan done before the world began. And this was promised by God who cannot lie. In the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 13, we read that believers are looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, the word hope is found here in these verses. Beloved, we have a hope Our hope is here labeled as life, eternal life, and our hope is located in the person, a person, just one, Jesus, the Lord of life. Without Jesus as your Savior, you have a sin record that is stained beyond your payment, but with Christ as your Savior, you have a sin record that is expunged, and there's no way to find any past record. This is even better than what a computer can do. Even a computer, I'm told, cannot totally wipe out its memory. But Jesus totally wipes out all your sin. It's never to be remembered against you anymore. Friend, you need Christ as your Savior. Right now, bow your head and a humble heart and receive him as your Savior from sin. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.